There are seven continents on our planet. A continent is a large section of land that is separated from other areas of land. Most of the time, they are separated by water. The seven continents are North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. The country we are studying today is Canada, and it is found on the North American continent. Canada is the United States neighbor on the north, and its territory runs as far north as you can go. It's a beautiful land with a lot of lakes and rivers. Canada shares a historical timeline similar to that of the United States. The land of Canada was inhabited by Native American Indians for thousands of years, just like it was in the United States. There may have been as many as two million people living in Canada during the 15th century. Canada began to be colonized by Great Britain and France around the same time that colonies were being established in what is now the United States. And unfortunately, just like many places that were colonized by Europe, wars and disease were the main cause of death among so many of the natives during the coloni colonization period. As much as 80% of the people were killed by disease, that was brought by European travelers. So Canada in the beginning was controlled by both the French and English colonies, but eventually the French gave up control of their colonies and Canada became one of the 16 Commonwealth countries that Great Britain still rules over today. A Commonwealth country is one that makes its own laws, elects its own leaders, but still recognizes the Queen of England as its head of state. New Zealand is another country that we have studied that is one of the 16 Commonwealth countries of Great Britain. The name Canada comes from an Indian word meaning a settlement or a village. When travelers came to the Quebec area where this particular tribe lived, they would ask for directions to the nearest settlement and the natives would point and say, Kanata, which is the word for village or settlement. Well, that name eventually stuck for the whole region, and Kanata eventually became known as Canada. Canada was involved with both World War I and World War II. During World War I, it became involved with the war simply because Great Britain had declared war, and Canada, by default, had to become involved in the war as well. During World War II, Canada made its own decision to become involved with the war. And interestingly enough, it was during World War, World war II that Canada grew a lot economically. They became prosperous during this time. And it was at this point during World War II that Canada really came to rise as a world power. Today, Canada is one of the wealthiest nations on earth and has one of the highest standards of living and the average income per person. Canada has almost 35 million people living there. But that is actually a pretty small number compared to how much land they have. It is actually one of the most sparsely populated places on earth. There are large clusters of people in some of the cities, but in general, people are pretty spread out there. Canada has two official languages, English and, as you might guess, French. Having two official languages means that a person can go to any public service and have that service performed in either French or English. In general, English is more common in the western part of Canada, and closer to the east, it is more common to find people speaking French. About 17% of the population say that they can speak both French and English. The food in Canada varies a great deal depending on where you are. Much of it is similar to anything that you are familiar with. But there is one dish 
that is uniquely Canadian, and it's called Putin. Putin is basically French fries and cheese curds with gravy poured over the top. And that might seem a little strange and out there to some Americans, but even chain restaurants like McDonald's and Burger King will have this on the menu in Canada. The majority of the Canadians identify themselves as Christians, with the majority being Catholic. Canada's official national sports are hockey and lacrosse. In the 2010 Olympics, Canada had a big year. They claimed the gold medal in hockey, and it was one of their greatest moments of national pride. With all of its lakes and islands, Canada has the most coastline of any country on earth. It also has the longest border with another country. The border between the United States and Canada is the longest land border in the world. About 80% of Canadians live close to this border and in cities. Canada has what they consider to be a very progressive view on social issues. They provide free health care to all of their citizens. They have high taxation and they have outlawed capital punishment. They allow same-sex marriage and they have very strict gun laws. Now these are some pretty hot topics here in the United States. Bring up any one of those topics at a party and you're bound to find a pretty heated argument. These are all things that are not currently legal in the United States, but are continually, continually debated and discussed from the government on down to parties in a house. Among some of the great natural wonders that you can find in Canada is Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is a massive waterfall in between New York and southern Ontario. Niagara Falls is also a city in both Ontario and New York. Yes, in the United States and in Canada, they both have a city with the exact same name, just on opposite sides of the river, Niagara Falls. The Canadian Niagara Falls is like the Las Vegas of Canada. They proclaimed themselves the honeymoon capital of the world. Well, if you ever wanted to visit a foreign country, but were afraid or didn't know where to start, Canada is probably a pretty good place to start. You can drive there, the people are friendly, they speak English in most parts, and it is a beautiful place to visit.